Hey guys, welcome to bedtime with Nana. Get on your jammies. Come on, sweet story. Bedtime story. I just want to know first of all, you like to dig in the dirt and in the sand? How come? You like finding stuff? I do. I like digging I like finding stuff. We used to dig up our whole backyard. We found all kinds of treasures. Man, treasures. All kinds of treasures. Even some teeth. False teeth. Anyway, but we did. That's, that's a true story. So tonight we're going to tell the story about a woman who dared to dig and explore and discover fine stuff. And this is the story of the dinosaur lady, Mary Anning. And it is by Linda Skears. And it's illustrated by Martha Alvarez McQueens. It's Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the First Paleontologist. Do you know what a paleontologist is? Uh oh, it's a dinosaur person. Oh, because she loves scouring the beach near her home in England for shells and fossils. She fearlessly climbed over crumbling cliffs and rocky peaks, searching for new specimens dinosaurs. One day, something caught her eye. I wonder what it was. Bones! Dinosaur bones! Of course. She discovered... Her discoveries rocked the world of science and helped create a brand new field of study. Paleontology. Paleontology, yeah. You know, dinosaur... Dinosaur. Credit she deserved. Nevertheless, I mean, she was... She was here during a time when... People thought women couldn't be scientists. But though uh, we reproved them wrong. Did we not? Yes, so here we are. She uh she didn't get the credit she deserved, so but she kept looking and learning and making discoveries and that reshaped scientific beliefs about the natural world. So, let's see what happened with dinosaur Lady Mary. Mary Anning dodged high tides and crashing waves to scour the beach near her hometown of Lyme Regis, England. England. She filled her basket with curiosities to sell to tourists, like seashells and fossils with fanciful local names like snake stones, which among ammonites, devil toenails, belemnites, and angel wings, petricola folidiform dormus. Mm -hmm. And I probably didn't say them very good. Petricola foladi or from yeah. <laughs> She scrambled over crumbling cliffs and rocky peaks while avoiding life threatening landslides. Despite the constant danger, Mary wasn't afraid. She was determined to uncover the area's long buried secrets, no matter the risk. I got a string hang on. <laughs> Mary learned to read and write at Sunday school, but she wanted to learn more. She had so many questions about the bones and fossils she found, and she needed answers. She bur borrowed books and copied scientific papers. <clears throat> she sketched intricate drawings of her discoveries, and she made notes. Lots and lots of notes. Lots and lots of notes. One morning when Mary and her brother were exploring the cliffs, she saw something surprising. Nestled in the rock was a large eye socket looking right back at them. It's looking at us. Okay. Carefully they chiseled away dirt and stone to expose a four foot long head with a pointed snout. Massive jaw. Hundreds of teeth. It was frightening. But Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinated. What did she find? Mm. They coaxed workers from the village to help dig it out and carry it home. Well, they needed the whole village. It was big. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. While the men returned to their work, wait a minute. Can we get it? Oh, yeah. Uh, Mary set out to find the creature's body. The cliffs were constantly shifting and sliding. It had to be buried nearby. But where? Day after day, Mary scrambled over the cliffs. Week after week, she searched. Month after month. 
month after month. After almost a year, Mother Nature lent Mary a helping hand. The powerful wind and pounding rain from a devastating storm caused several landslides. In one night, the cliff's ancient layers were exposed, layers that it would have taken Mary years to uncover with her hammer and chisel. Something caught Mary's eyes. Bones. Bones. Boldly, Mary chipped away and uncovered ribs, vertebrae, flippers. Was it a crocodile? Fish? A lizard? No, Mary had discovered a creature never seen before. Was she scared? Nope, not at all. Mary's awesome. But many villagers were. Soon they were talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich collector who offered to buy the skeleton. Mary hated to see it go, but the money would help the Anning, Anning, Anning family survive for months. The collector donated it to a London museum, and scientists and geologists flocked to the exhibit. They studied it, calculated, and debated. They named it Ichthyosaurus, which meant fish lizard. The word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. Icto. That's a hard word. Icto. The. Oh, sorry. Ichthyo. Sorry. Okay. Hmm. They made an announcement that shocked the world. Mary's find wasn't just old, it was mi a million years old. They, their declarations shattered the commonly held belief that the Earth was only 6,000 years old. Mm, that's a long time. Also, no one had realized that a species could become extinct until they studied the remains of a creature that no longer walked the Earth. Well, it looked like he swam, I think, didn't he? Well, he had slippers. When others discussed her discovery, Mary kept exploring and learning. Yeah, I can't get the paste turn. Over the years, Mary also found many odd, dark, lumpy pebbles inside skeletons. She examined them, reread her notes, and studied her drawings. Mary figured out what they were, except it was something a lady shouldn't talk about. But Mary was more of a scientist than a proper lady, so she proclaimed those stones, these stones known as bezoars, were actually fossilized poop. Geologists sneered. Scientists scoffed. Then they took a closer look and realized she was right. Mary's discovery helped scholars learn more about what some ancient creatures are. They have poop. Poop. Mary also found many long, thin, cone-shaped fossils. They were unremarkable. Ordinary, at least on the outside. Curious, she cut one open. Tucked inside was a small pocket filled with a thick, dark substance. Mary was even more curious now. Adding a few drops of water turned the substance into ink. Mary's discovery proved that, proved that ancient aquatic creatures squirted ink to hide themselves from hungry predators. Camouflage. When Mary was 24, she made another amazing discovery. This creature didn't have legs or flippers. It had wings. Now what do wings mean? It can fly. Mary had unearthed a prehistoric flying reptile called Pterosaur. Pterosaur. I'm probably not saying these right. Pterosaur. Around the world, scientists were talking about Mary's incredible discoveries. But they weren't talking about Mary. Not at first. Oh no, not at first. It's a man. Mary's word. Even though Mary couldn't identify a species from one single bone and rebuild entire skeletons like a jigsaw puzzle, she couldn't join the Geological Society of London. Women were not allowed. She couldn't attend lectures or teach university classes or even take classes. But Mary knew her discoveries were important and would change the way people viewed the Earth's past. And so did many geolo geo geologists and scientists and scholars. Because where did they go when they had questions? 
straight to Mary's cottage. Eager to learn more, they followed her over the cliffs, even if it terrified them, and it did. Is there a big old scared cats? Just like long buried fossils, Mary's achievements had slowly been uncovered and shared with the world. Her daring discoveries helped form paleontology, the branch of geology that uses fossils to study prehistoric life. And she did all that with a homemade hammer, a chisel, and a never-ending quest to fearlessly keep exploring and learning. You go, Mary. There you go, Mary. Here is some bone bits and fossil facts. A paleo paleontologist is a scientist who studies fossils. I said dinosaur, but they're fossils to me. Megalosaurus was the first dinosaur officially named in 1824. In 1842, paleontologist Richard Owen coined the term dinosaur from the Greek dinos, meaning terrible, and saurus, meaning lizard, terrible lizard. There are over 700 different kinds of dinosaurs that have been discovered and named. A fossil is Latin for having been dug up. It's is the remains of an animal or plant that has turned to rock over many years. An ammonite is a prehistoric sea creature with a spiral shell often found on the beach. Okay. A belemnite is a prehistoric sea creature like a squid which squirts ink to defend itself from predators. I've never heard of that one. A corp Coprolites is a coprolites is the fancy name for fossilized poop, also known as bezoars. They were at one time thought to have all sorts of medicinal properties. <laughs> poop. poop. Dinosaur fossils have been around on found on all seven continents. Some dinosaur eggs were as small as your thumbnail, and others were the size of basketballs. Petricola, Bolodiformis. It's a type of clam, also known as the false angel wing, because its ribbed white shells resemble angel wings. Okay, and there we go. Okay, this is a note from the author. Even as a young girl, Mary had the uncanny ability to spot a small fossil, seashell, or bone fragment that others overlooked. She used this skill when she accomplished accompanied her father, on his scavenging trips. Her father was a carpenter and cabinet maker who supplemented his meager earnings by finding seashells and fossils to sell to tourists vacationing in the area, who were there to take in the sea and air. Mary was looking for trinkets to sell, but she was also looking for answers to questions that baffled her. What created these strange-looking fossils? Where did they come from? What were they? She spent her entire life exploring, studying, and learning without any formal education and relying on her own observations, intricate drawings, and meticulous notes. She became an expert on prehistoric creatures, earning the nickname Princess of Paleontology. She also lived in one of the best fossil hunting places on Earth, Lyme Regis. It's part of the Jurassic Coast and was underwater 200 million years ago. Storms and winter weather erode and crumble the cliffs, exposing fossils and bones. Mary didn't use special equipment, just a hammer her father had made, a chisel, and a hat that she had shellacked so many times it was hard as a helmet. Her father passed away when she was 11, nursing Mary, her 14-year-old brother Joseph, and their mother into deep poverty. Mary's curiosities now help pay the rent and buy food. During her lifetime, Mary made five major discoveries of previously unknown species and several smaller, but still significant finds that helped change the way people looked at the world. And help them understand the past. When she was 24, she discovered the first complete Plesiosaurus, an aquatic creature with flippers. It was such an astonishing find. Even the paleontologist George Cuvier declared it a fraud. But after he examined it, he proclaimed it's the most amazing creature ever discovered. By the time Mary was 27, she had managed to save up enough money to buy a cottage with a glass door front window and turn the front room into a shop called Annie's Fossil Depot. She displayed her discoveries in the window. Oh, that's where 
this thing, the tongue twister written in 1908 is said to be about Mary. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells, she shells, sells our seashells. I can't even do it. I'm sure. For if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Okay, that's a hard one. Her whole portrait now hangs in the Natural History Museum in London. And is that her? No. Let me see. Well, that, I'll have to post a picture. But that is very interesting. So, thinking about your discoveries when you're digging in the sand in the yard and the teeth that I found. They were human. They were plus teeth. So, anyway, but I hope you have sweet dreams. I love you. Good night.